for the All right, let's get started. If you're not a judge, sit down and be quiet, please. Or if you're not the chief, you can stay standing and talking, chief, too. What's up, short timer? Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to 1D. Um, we are live on YouTube now, so all the world is watching. Um, if you have connected via Zoom, um, please make sure you leave video off. You are also welcome to pick up everything we're doing on the YouTube feed for my division on the um, uh, court's website. Uh, I think right now we don't have too many people who've connected via Zoom, but we may reach a point where um, I selectively remove a few of you to, or do you want that to happen already? Are we good having this many people on Zoom or do we need them to go to YouTube? We're good? Okay, all right. Um, so thank you everyone for, for being here. Um, our goal today is to test the evidence presentation for this courtroom, which is where we will be conducting our first jury trial. Our hope is that first jury trial occurs on March 15th the gods and Justice Melton willing. Um, he has a stay in place that runs through the very beginning of March. All signs are that um, he uh, intends to lift that stay, assuming that the COVID numbers don't get discouraging or more discouraging between now and the time the, the stay would expire. So we already have a calendar in place. Currently, Judge Krause's case Vantavius Merritt is going to be first out. So that's what would be tried in here. The calendar, I guess we lost one position today when a Judge Ellerby's case is pled out. But I think right now, um, Judge Krause's case is first out. Judge Newkirk has a very busy young man who's got four cases, only one of which would be tried, but he'd be second out. And then I think Judge Whitaker is after that. You do it however you want to do it. Fantastic. It's just, it's just got to be one defendant. It can be 100 cases. We're limiting it to one defendant for, for capacity reasons. Um, I want to give you all um, a couple updates um, as to how jury trials are going to work early on. But again, today, we're not doing jury selection. We're just going to retest things that we tried in December in terms of making sure that the jury which will be seated here in the central gallery, can see and hear all the evidence that's being presented. Um, before I give you the updates, I want to thank very much um, Mr. Enduran and his IT team that has made all this possible. Um, it is a lot of work to get all these things connected. And my guess is there'll still be a few hiccups today, and it's not for want of trying, but they have been a full-service organization making this work out. Secondly, I want to thank the sheriff, um, and, and his chief here um, for supporting us in this process. This will be a deputy intensive trial just because so many moving parts and our jury is in a public space. The jury will deliberate in one C, so there'll be deputies getting them from here to there. And most importantly, and this is the first big update, jury selection is going to occur in assembly hall. And it is a big step by the sheriff's office to agree to provide security for an in custody defendant over an assembly hall. Um, but they've spec'd it and um, I'm not gonna go into the details of how it works, but they believe that they can provide security for an in custody defendant in an uh, unobtrusive way where the defendant um, will be able to leave assembly hall with his lawyers in an unobtrusive manner. So thank you um, to the sheriff and his team for providing that support. They've been uh, great to work with and the answer has always been let's figure out if we can do it as opposed to, there's no way that will happen. And that, that's a refreshing situation. So jury selection will be in assembly hall. Uh, the other innovation, um, and we'll try this out today, we have acquired headsets. Ideally the headsets will be for 
all of the lawyers presenting the case. So one or two defense attorneys, one or two prosecutors, the defendant, maybe the judge and the court reporter as well. We'll see how that works. The number one purpose for those would be so that counsel and client can communicate in quiet tones while social distancing. I think the primary feedback that we got from the defense team was, I happen to be sitting with another public defender that I'm kind of comfortable being cozy with, but during trial, I'd like my client to be kind of far away from me. Um, and how do we do that if um, we need to confer in the middle of trial? And the best thing we could come up with was to have headsets where it's basically closed channel for lawyer and client so no one else is picking it up. You just need to speak quietly and you'll be able to hear what the other is saying. You don't have to rely on typing or, or writing something down. So we'll try that out, see how it goes. Ideally, the prosecutors would get headsets so they can do the same. And then if we ever need to have a bench conference, if the judge and the court reporter can get onto the same channel, um, then we might be able to accomplish bench conferences without having to send all the jurors into courtroom 1C. And the last change and in innovation from last time um, is that I think, and we're gonna test this out today, um, any device that a lawyer brings into the courtroom that has evidence on it, so it could be a laptop, it could be an iPad, a tablet, whatnot, should, should be able to connect to the evidence presentation system. So it's plug and play. I actually don't think you plug anything. You, you got Wi-Fi, uh-oh. Yeah. Yes? That is correct, except in the case of Audio, um, audio file. Okay, so a 911 call, we have to handle a different way. Yes, because if they try to play from their device, it will cause an echo, so we play from here. Okay. If it's a still image, if it's a, any digital like document scan, they can any non any non audio. Okay, good refinement. So your crime scene photos, digital photos, you bring in your own laptop and it will connect with the system. No cords, you don't have to press that very fragile button that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't and turns the lights off. Um, I guess if it's something with audio, we'll handle differently. The DA's office should for today have a little bit of everything. So there'll be video with audio, which we'll need to do there and audio only, but everything else they ought to be able to broadcast from their own devices. Um, and I think that's it. Um, people should, if, if there are concerns while we're working through this, because you can't see or you can't hear, don't wait till the end of the session to tell us that because we want to start adjusting things. This courtroom won't be returned to its old format anytime soon. This is going to be the trial courtroom for the foreseeable future. So we may need to move desks three inches that way or this way based on the feedback we get today. But then we might as well put some tape on the floor to show where those things are so that we, everyone knows this is what it's going to look like when your case is up for trial. It may be that someday soon we can set up 1C in a similar way if we figure out where juries would go to deliberate. But for now, this will be um, base camp for trials other than jury selection being in Assembly Hall. And I think that's it. Judge Krauss, Judge Richardson, anything you wanted to add based on the work you've been doing? Okay, great. Uh, so right now that we don't have the screen set up for the, you're talking about having two screens in the gallery for the jurors. I asked Mr. Enger in that he said right now he's thinking that will work, but we may learn real quickly that it, it doesn't work. Um, the main focus will be whether the jurors can see, so folks who are in the center, but it's useful to know if someone way over there can't see and the obstruction is not the wall. If you can't see through the wall, we, we can't help that. But if it's just it's too small, I don't think uh, Mr. Armstrong can see the screen. Um, despite having Superman's powers, um, he, he can't. So the screen doesn't work for folks over there. This screen will be on in normal times. This television is broken right now. Um, so it will be replaced. But that still doesn't address folks sitting over there, which would not be jurors, but you could have members of the public. So it will be just this court most courtrooms the only space is straight ahead um there's not effectively a wing if you will there's there's the middle of the courtroom so what you build here isn't gonna you don't have the dimensions in in the other courtrooms but i i, I think that judge richardson's right maybe as we have to figure out 
with that door, how we do it, but a screen angled that way. Okay. We'll have we'll, we'll get input from the- Yep, the but that'll, that'll go on the notes. Okay, anything else, questions about what we're trying to do or anything I shared about the format as we understand the trial will be on, on the 15th with jury selection across the street? Great, well, thank you everyone for being here. Ms. McCauley, I'm gonna to turn to you just because you were my point of contact with the DA's office. Um, do you have a couple folks who will be sitting at council's table and then a, a witness? So I have a witness right here. Um, I, I was gonna say council's table, but I'll take a volunteer for the people that are here. So can you respond for me? That's, there's a volunteer. Okay, I'll take John. I'll take John. Sorry, Ms. Gondry. <laughs> Not voluntold. We also need at least one defense attorney and a client. And Ms. Walsh had promised me that that was going to happen. Great. No, we need two. So one of you can be the client. One of you can be the lawyer. Uh oh. Tell me how that feels. You want to sit up here? Yeah. Thank you. I'm just going to log in. The volume? Yes. Hi, guys. Is there an echo? 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 Can you go to my office and grab my charger for my laptop? I'm, I'm muting a few folks. It should be God. sitting on the desk. Yes. Oh, never mind. We're good. Okay, good. Um, all these are from all these. Oh, no. You know, there is that microphone that won't turn off. They should work. You're welcome to come up here if you want to bring a chair. You good? Okay. Because it had everything that we needed. Okay. Yes. Yes, and, and uh, Dejuan says he's going to make that happen. And on that screen, ultimately, will just be the witness and then any exhibit. So all that, I think it would only be when we're displaying an exhibit. It ought to just be the witness. Um, I'm using all the exhibits for that. And then this is my physical exhibit. Because I literally didn't have anything. <laughs> That's your gun? Than this. So... We'll That's the murder weapon. Up. We'll add like what we do. Hey, Dutch, does he need to be up on the stand? Yes. On the stand? Yeah. And then for the exhibit, I have everything on a flash drive, and I also save it to my desk to desktop. So. We're so um, it, I didn't know about that audio wrinkle. Um, so if you would do everything but your files with audio. I only brought the one. Because you only told me to bring one one video with audio. Oh, and no, I have a video. I have an audio. Only. Yeah, it should have been an audio only, like a jail call or something. Okay. And then one video with audio. Those you can do from the podium. Everything else from right there. Okay, perfect. All right. So in terms of turning off the other cameras, you, how do we... Okay, it's fine. For that, okay, that screen today. should have... Um, just the witness. The, the big screen that the jury would be looking at would be just the witness. I'll do it. Right. So that's the that's the witness. So the witness don't show on the defendant. Yes. Yeah. 
So the witness going to show on the defendant's screen. Are you coming out like the idea is that that's the screen for everybody just so they can have a closer view okay. of the individual sitting on the bench? Because, okay. of course, remember the jury would normally be, be right there. five feet from them. Yeah. Okay. We can, in the end, set it up in what makes the most sense. So if, if you develop a perspective that you really want the witness on that screen. Because, I mean, it would be easier for the defendant to see. That's my physical evidence. The witness here, but, yeah. Well, and that's also one of the things you need to help us understand. If you don't have a clear line of sight, we need to move furniture. Okay. Well, I mean, you do. I do have a clear line of sight of the witness. Good. But I just think it's going to be sort of distracting for the defendant because he's going to try to look. I mean, he's used to looking at a television screen. So I don't know. I, I, I'll try it. Okay. All right, Mr. Andrew, are we good to go? All right, so we're gonna get started. We are mid-trial, uh, State versus Frederick Herman Jones, who, if you don't know, that's Fred from Scooby-Doo. Um, and he is accused of killing Shaggy. There's an awkward love triangle with Daphne. Um, so we've got defendant Fred um, and his lawyer, and the state is uh, gonna be presenting evidence um, in support of the charges that they have brought. And doesn't need to tie in with what we're talking about, but we just need to, um, Test out how things work. Are you gonna? What format do you want to start with? Um, we can start with digital still photo. Great. I think that's the most common type of exhibit because that be pretty much anything flat. So, I just put it on my laptop, or I bring it up there. Um, you'll be able to do it from there. How you make it talk to the system? I don't. I don't. That's why we're here today. But you don't have to get up. I'm not on the call, but I can. Okay. What was it? Join the school call. The Zoom link's in my calendar. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. You're not connected to the internet, Jeremy. No. So, Judge, just a quick question. The Sorry, microphone is here for the text. defendant, but. At some point, the defense okay. attorney is going to be the one cross-examining this witness. So, wouldn't the microphone need to be on that side of the shield? As well as the yeah. and the screen. Yeah, I don't think that the deputies are going to want the screen on the defendant's side. And I think the microphone was set up. All we did was rotate that um, 90 degrees, and it was on that side. But I think you're exactly right. The yeah. microphone is not for the defendant. The defendant better not be saying something to the general audience um, <laughs> through the microphone during the trial. Um, well, I've so, been in trials where the defendant has said something to me, the judge, uh, the jury, and, and the, the deputy. So, yeah. Thank you, Judge Richardson. No Real-time fix. Are we anticipating that the attorney is going to be questioning witnesses from the table, or will they go to the podium? The attorneys will be free to do either. Um, some attorneys have expressed a desire to be standing to do what they're doing, as long as being at the podium doesn't block. It certainly won't block the defendant's view. I don't know about defense counsel, but I don't know how movable the podium is. But what we don't want to do is have them bringing their devices up to the podium just because then we're getting device clutter. So if you have a device. Are there a couple more screens so that? There could be one at the end of the council tables between them and the jury as well. Focused out at the jury? Yeah. When you say screens, meaning these little ones? Clear screens that are anyway. Oh, oh, these things. <laughs> We've got lots of these. Okay. As Judge McBurney, as for the presentation of evidence, so if council wants to present, we would present from our council table, not approach the podium. So I guess I should be clear on, on, on this. Um, what we'll be working through today are some of the technical minimum requirements. I don't mean to suggest that if Judge X was sitting here, that he or she would do exactly what I'm doing. Absolutely. So um, if I were the trial judge, I would let you go from the podium or from your current location. That would not bother me at all. It would be easier and safer for you to stay right where you are. But if your practice is, look, I stand it up, I get a little closer to the witness, I wouldn't prevent you from going to the podium. Would all 20 judges in Fulton County say the same thing? You know not, but um, so, so we, we are not issuing those types of edicts because they, they wouldn't stick. 
um, that will be the, the personal preference of the judge. The good news is the judges who are likely to try a case on the first few calendars are all in this room. And so they can chime in if they think that I'm beating you. So with that being said, would we, would we be expected to stand or sit for the purposes of being in camera view? So the, the camera is less of an issue um, because this is an in-person proceeding. The microphone is the issue. The, the jury sees you. They don't see you on a screen. Okay. I want to make sure the jury can hear you. So you being near a microphone is what's of value to making sure the jury and the court reporter are following things. So if you're at council table, my guess is you're sitting. If you're at the podium, you're standing. I guess I was thinking access if it's streamed on YouTube for the general public. If they're not allowed to participate in our streaming, are we catering to them or? Nope, they need to be able to hear what's going on and generally see what's going on. If they can't see your face, that's like, you know, you could be watching any event and you catch one person and not the other. It needs to be audible. Um, but Judge Krause, you have anything you, you look like you were going to add to that? I had to sort of work through this too, but I mean, I think what, what helped me understand is that the purpose of the screening really serves three purposes. One of them is to allow us to hear the arguments and to broadcast on YouTube and live to YouTube if we need to, to provide public access. The second reason is to provide a screen that allows us to make the witness's face bigger for the jury that's farther away no. from the witness than they would normally be. Okay. And the third reason, thanks to Mr. Anjuran, is that it enables us to broadcast the evidence within the court. And so that's why the screen is there. But at the end of the day, trying to get sidetracked and all that stuff, because at the end of the day, you're still conducting a criminal trial in person in front of actual jurors that are sitting in front of you. Got it. And, and one point on that, and then Judge Richardson, the the vote against being at the podium is that you're putting your back to the jury. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, we've got this weird setup. Normally the podium, you can see pretty much everything you need to see, jury, judge, witness, the podium now, you're telling the jury, see my shoulders. And that may send a message, it may not. So that's a reason why I would be very comfortable in allowing you to present your questions from where you are, where you'd need to be seated so that the microphone captures it. So are we are we anticipating leaving the cameras on on council tables? You know, that's what we're working through today. I'm not quite sure why they would need to be on. I'm not sure why, like mine is on right now. I don't know that mine needs to be on. Again, the, the, the goal of this isn't can someone on YouTube see in technicolor whether I'm wearing a yellow shirt or a, a blue shirt. It, it's to get the gist of the proceedings, which is lawyers and, and witnesses going back and forth. I think, I mean, I think there might be a greater risk to it. It's just kind of close up camera on the middle time. Yeah. Why don't we do this? Um, I'm gonna um, turn off the cameras in those places and then really we'll know if someone felt they needed it. If they say, wait, why is the camera not on? But lip readers could learn what's going on. <laughs> Head Bob readers. I can try to do a nail All right, Mr. Anjuran, how are we doing? Yeah, the photo is not not coming out for some reason. Ms. McCauley's promised photos. Don't blame me. Blame the technology. But no, it's all on there. It's all on a flash drive. So tell me about this virtual march. Um, when is this? It's on um, Saturday at 11 o'clock. It's going to be on Channel 2. No, I don't mind if you're sorry. 11 and Facebook. Okay. So basically, you film a video of yourself talking about voter suppression and the new laws. And Andy Young's going to be on there. Me and Crawford, myself. Are any of you in the gallery connected with colleagues who are trying to watch on YouTube? And are you getting any feedback from them that it's working or not working? I'm getting some emails like, wow, I can't see this or see that. I'm curious. Oh, yeah. 
we got some, I remember last time we were getting real time updates from the public defender's office about what was working and not working. Trying to provide some cover for the DA's office so they can get their <laughs> still photos ready. Imagine what's gonna happen with the videos. <laughs> I have smiley eyes now. You know how when they pull stuff up, they got authenticated. It, it's clearly on the screen that we're not going to pass it back before. If we're not sharing it. Yeah, I so I wonder if this is going to be a skill for you to have to submit it all. Mm -hmm. it's not, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's a game time decision. So I just need to bring it up here um, for myself. See if I can just shoot that one. Okay. Um, I'll try that one. But I also don't know how long you'll be my exhibit ahead of time. You know what I'm saying? If you want us to review it and agree to disagree, I think they were talking about that before too, like I'm just in the head of time. No. I don't want to give you my exhibit. It's like, like, I don't. Okay. Well, we turned the defense camera off, I think, for good reason. Um, I, I, I wouldn't want the camera on me from two feet away. You know what? Hmm? We're going to do what? We're going to turn them on? Why? Computer's restarted, it's not updated. What? No, they can hear it. You turn it on, okay. Oh, I need to turn them on? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to use that. Oh, I think it was updated. No, it just like updated for like five minutes. Thanks. I'm going to try this in this calendar and back to myself. All right, so where do I? Well, it's still for the So put the um, defendant back on. Putting it all to my channel. I can't turn it on. I can just ask to start. He's going to do that. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. This is why we're doing this. No, that the yours is not working right now. Um, so there's a way to make them not live and hot by pressing the mute button, but yours should be flashing blue. It, 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 it's not well. That's what blue means. And so the manufacturer, the installer actually is coming out here to make it not flash blue. And so if it's red, then you are able to talk to the person at your table and the rest of the world doesn't hear it. But today, that's not going to work as well. Okay. Yeah. What about like, yeah, I don't know that we've got that. The one on the podium gets the gallery, but that would show the jury and that's not the view we want. It's almost like we want one from over there where there is no camera. Yeah. Oh. So we'll get something to work today, right? Yep, we got the um, one video. Hold on, I'm still signing in. I've been getting the same messages. So this does work? So it works very well. What doesn't work is the mute button. Oh. That when it's flashing blue, it means you can't turn it off. It's it's so um, correct. So we're aware of that issue. It's just one that that we can't fix. Okay. In normal times, it would be green. And if you touched it, if you turned it red, then people should not be able to hear what you're saying. Okay. 
Okay. For today, it's not an issue. That's okay. Um, we just, if you get the video working, the audio, if the jury can hear things when they, the fact that people can overhear right now is okay. As long as you know, we can turn it off when we need to. Did the PD's office bring any exhibits? We did not. <laughs> well, you don't have the burden, so okay. you didn't. There we go. All right. There's nothing better than this. This is the content we deserve. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we were waiting on? Mm -hmm. Well, we had to fix, we had to get a computer that worked because yours didn't. Oh, well, fair enough. So it works when we do the share screen, opening a digital still video or still image. Okay. What was the hiccup? Hiccup was the image was corrupted on my flash drive, the okay. original one that I put on the computer. So I had to get a new one. So it was an image issue, not a connectivity right, issue. Yes, yeah, so that works. Is there a way to make it just the image? Uh, well, well, I'm not I'm not being real clear. Um, that particular application, there's all this white around it. Um, like if you have a crime scene photo, is there a way to have it just be, here's the crime scene photo? I don't know. If I think it's not, okay. So I didn't mean zoom so much as just sort of fill the screen. Okay. Yeah. There we go. There is a way to do it. Yes, Judge Whitaker. No, that's a great point. Um, one of the things that the judges are going to encourage the parties to do in advance of the trial is to stipulate as to the admissibility of as much as possible. Um, if that's not possible, um, it's not a requirement, it just makes things flow more smoothly, then we do need to make sure that we have a way for the witness to authenticate things um, before they hit the big screen. Um, one thing that we've talked about among the judges as a good protocol would be to have the attorney who is examining a witness have available all the exhibits at once to get them in front of that witness. So the attorney's not going back and forth. Here's the next picture. And I know some lawyers like the show of, I'm gonna get up each time and show you another picture. We're not doing that. You get one trip to your witness unless you really, really forgot about an exhibit to give that witness. So you give all your exhibits to the witness so that she or he can flip through them and say, yep, I see one through 20, those fair and accurate depictions of the crime scene. Yes, they were, I'm the one who took the pictures. Great, they're admitted. And then we get to where we are now. So we'd certainly skip the step. Today wasn't meant to be, probably should have done it, but obviously there are procedural hurdles. The jury doesn't see that dangerous dog with the evidence between his legs unless a foundation has been laid and it's been admitted by a judge. Assuming it's been admitted, there it is on the screen and we need to make sure folks in the gallery, in particular, back row and second to last row, can see that. Um, do they know what it is? Can they see what it is? And um, we need the witness to talk about it a little bit so we can see if the jury can hear the witness talk about the exhibit. Sir. But is there a way to have the exhibit flash up on the witnesses, on the screens in front of the witness, and then once it's admitted, bring it up on the big screen? Yes, and we've talked about that. That may be like our third or fourth trial before we're that fluent, but ideally what could happen is the state could say, here's exhibit one, and on the screen at defense counsel's table, exhibit one pops up and in front of the witness, so the defense attorney can see what the witness is looking at, and you ask your foundational questions, and then it's admitted, and then I don't know who the magic person is. It's not the court reporter. Someone would need to press a button that would then say it can appear on the big screen because um, it's then published. Um, and so someday we may get to that level of electronic fluency, but I suspect initially will be old school. And because you need to, you know, there'll be that hard copy that would the jury could look at during deliberations. So if that's what's in front of your witness, 
she looks at it and says, yep, um, that's a picture of the dog that did the deed. Um, and then you publish it and it goes on the big screen. Can you see it? Yes, Great, Mr. Armstrong. I just wanted to suggest for an easy fix to the issue about the witnesses screen is that it be pushed perpendicular to this point because this is the point beyond which no juror can see. If it's perpendicular, it's, if it's flush, it switches a little bit more, then there's, I don't think there's any possible way for the jury to see what's on the floor. It's also got the camera attached to it. So, I mean, I guess. I have it on the left side, Judge. Yeah. Okay, but if just can can any of you in the jury box? Because we wouldn't. Um, I want jurors standing up um, like that. Can you see what's on the witness screen? Quit screen. Okay. Yeah. All right. And and um, can you see the witness? The screen's not blocking the defendant's view. No. We can see Great. Okay. Good. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Did you have? Yes, Judge, I was going to play that you said that with respect to approaching the witness to uh, present different exhibits. Is that, you said, public witness one time before the courtroom must be present this courtroom. exhibits, notebooks by which they can play to. So, good question. Again, we're straying into each judge can set her own rules, um, but uh, safety would suggest that you've got your notebook. If it's if it's the lead detective, it's going to be a notebook. If it's your coroner, it's some photos and it's the ME report. But ideally, um, and, and maybe it's even before the witness comes in, judge, our next witness is Dr. Henning. We know it's going to be about five minutes before he comes in. So you go... You put on the witness stand, so it's sitting there. Dr. Henniger, if you open the red bell um, and you pull out exhibit 32, do you recognize that? That's the report I wrote about that. So it's all there. Um, that way. Yeah. Excellent. It was her idea anyway. Just, I'm the one at the microphone. All right. Yes, ma'am. I hope that there's some training for us if that's going to be a thing we're expected to do. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, I think to begin with, we'll probably hand pick that. I didn't hear the first part of your question. <laughs> <life. laughs> uh, and, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. That's probably. probably anyway. Well, I'll tell you, if, if it's my trial and you are going up again and again and again to the witness, I may say, you know what, you need to figure out what you're going to give that witness and leave it there. If, if you've got your transcript, you have two copies of the transcript and you leave a copy with the witness and say, sir, please turn to page 52 of the transcript. Because I know some attorneys like to say, and here it is, read it, read it. That you don't get to do that anymore. And, and I, I'm, I, that's what I tell you. And you can object and the Court of Appeals will affirm. <laughs> <laughs> That I have that shows I don't know what the facts here are. Uh, that very frightening dog holding um, the head of the victim. <laughs> Shaggy's head. <laughs> um, I would like to introduce that. Of course you are, and and this is all within limits. My point is, if you become a frequent flyer, you. Shouldn't be surprised if the judge says, is there a way you could streamline this? But we all get it that cross-examination, which is 98% of your diet, it, it is much more free form. And you're going to, you know what? I didn't know I could use this and this. So no one's going to compromise that beyond basic safety. If there's a way you could leave something with a witness, don't keep taking it away and then bringing it back to them. Okay. Sure. All right. So folks can see the picture in the center gallery, even in the back, it's visible. And you can see the witness, he's not as big on the screen because we're sharing it with the photo. Mr. Anjuran, is that adjustable? Could there be more emphasis on the exhibit or less? You don't need to change it. I just wanna know if, if someone has a preference of we don't need so much of the witness, let's get more of the exhibit. Is the, um, who, is able to do the sliding or the, we don't need the witness at all because it's a complicated map and everyone agrees. We just, we want that whole screen to be the exhibit with no, can, can the attorney examining the witness do that or it's gonna be a 
court employee who is doing that? It's okay. It's court staff that would do that. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, why don't you try seeing how quickly you can put, do you have another image or, or are we, we're overdoing it by asking you for more than one still. <laughs> okay. No more stills. What's next? Um, so I have a video with no sound. Okay. okay Let's try that. that. So that exhibit is admitted. You may publish it. All right, jurors. You need to move Mr. Andrew so you're not blocking the jurors. Audio no. This one does not have audio. Okay. I do have one with audio. So anyone with audio, you need to click on that. The door is not working. <laughs> hmm? No, this has no audio. So visible, are the people too small? Uh, jurors, are you able to see? <clears throat> okay, but that's good to know. So what, what is it on the prosecutor's table that the, the plastic thing? Oh, it's Macaulay. But then I'm blocking this group. Well, well they can't see the screen anyway. So if we have, is this table needed here? Because if we, this table was moved out, we have a set where it turns against the wall. We could have a second clear cut screen here, which is not going to block the door to the holding cell. And then we'd allow anybody, any jurors on that side, can see right here. And then any jurors on that side can see right here. And the defendant can turn a little closer. And again, that's not every courtroom, that's just in here. Right. Um, so we could get a second screen. That table is, doesn't have to be there. Um, it is occasionally used when a deputy is filling out some, some yes. paperwork. Yeah, yeah, it could be moved wherever. So if you all had a screen here, obviously for Ms. Convery and, and Ms. Hall and others, that's a better view because it's closer to you. Assuming you can see through the- So the plastic, but yeah, so either you look through the plastic closer or you look farther away, not through plastic. Okay. There she goes. Quick question, Joe. The first case out, do you want to be one defense lawyer or two? Is that how you be a problem? Okay. That's, I, I think Mr. Merritt has a public defender and usually they try and two, it's a senior defender. So he may have a, a, a partner. What's the, the problem that you see? Well, I, I think the answer is it would be the defendant is going to be right there because of where the in talking with the deputies, the defendant is there. So attorney number two is going to be probably around the corner and that the junior attorney has his or her back a little bit to the jury. But I think the, the main attorney is sitting right where she's sitting. And then if she has co-counsel, they're going to be at that end. So there won't be a mechanism for the defendant to be in the middle. And for me, that's because I need you to talk to my co-counsel and don't talk to me. So if my co-counsel is here, then you're talking to me. Well, that's your headsets. That's where we use the headsets. Okay. Because we have also been told by some attorneys, they don't want to sit as close as you two are sitting, that they're going to represent their client, but they're going to be sitting a little further away. Um, and so the headsets in theory would allow exactly what you're doing. Cause you're focused on, well, what's this prosecutor doing? I need to be ready and your clients jabbing you and jabbing you. So if you do have co-counsel, they'll use the headsets. Yeah. I, I don't know, you have to ask the, our, our colleagues in the tan. Right <laughs> what about the attorney? Can the can my co counsel be right there? there? Is there is there any? Hey, here comes another screen, just like that. Um, is there an issue if the defendant is Mr. Griggs? If you go back to where you were, if the defendant is where Mr. Griggs is, we got counsel on one side, and then counsel sitting where Mr. Griggs just was. So they're making an L. No issue with that. Okay. 
So then someone's got prime real estate. They're looking straight at the jury. They're not going to be able to see the witness. But again, it's co-counsel. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Judge, so I have a question. Yes. For procedural, because oftentimes we need the witness to step down or I guess and annotate the video or point things out in a photo. How would you like us to do that? So can you get the, well, that's, that's frozen. You're share, are you sharing your screen? I am sharing my screen. So there it should be a way if we're sharing screen. I, I hit pause. There, I hit pause. did that show up on the screen? It's kind of thin, I make it bigger. Oh, it's not showing up. That's weird. I made a big circle. So we need to figure out yes is the answer because you can um, uh, within Zoom, you can edit the screen that's being shared. Um, we just have to get permissions um, allocated because on, on my screen right now, I just drew a circle around the garbage can, but it didn't show up on the, on the big screen. But that's the way we would um, do what you're talking about. These are supposed to be cut straight. Yeah. Okay. 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 There we go. So sh we need to make sure the witness can annotate. Can annotate the same way they would if we were in a regular courtroom. Yep. With the touch screens. Can it be done on here? Is this cut? I don't know if this is a. Oh, well, I don't have a. Yeah, I don't have a keyboard or anything. Or a mouse here. So okay. Well, we need to figure out how to make that happen. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Well, they're working on that. Um, do you? What were there any other formats, non-audio formats we talked about? You've got um, a. I have an Elmo, and then I have physical evidence. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Anjuran, um, is there a way we, we? Most folks here, I think, are. Here to try out these other forms of evidence. Can we borrow you from this process? Because I think they're ready to try either using the Elmo or um, an exhibit with audio. Okay. Let's do the Elmo first. That's easier. Those are my okay. Thank you, Mr. Abate. Can you stop sharing? Oh, stop sharing. sharing. This courtroom is going to be available um, as a week now, and Mark and Kate, if the trial team that's trying the case wants to come. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving um, next week. And so uh, all everything I do will be in 8D as of Monday. Okay. So it is it is open because we may, like I said, we may need to shove things this way or that way. We if go. I were the trial team, I'd want to be spending a lot of time with yeah. <laughs> this. So, yes. So there is a way for us to do it. Okay. But it would come from your. I believe so. I mean, I think it may not be a Dejuan, but I think he understands that there'll need to be someone either working in the jury room who can come in, or or certainly um, physically in the room. Okay. Do we need the whole document shown, or just just a little bit small section? Is that possible? No, you can just zoom in on like a couple of these lines. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I think we're all familiar with using Elmo. Okay. Actually, this is not as clear as we would like it to be. I don't know when the zoom is small okay. enough. That, that's, I mean, that, that's good. Okay. Well, let's try to make it like a little bit bigger. Bigger. So you're just gonna have they're just gonna have to zoom across the information. What Ms. McCauley, did you do anything to make the Elmo come up or Mr. Anjuran did? He did it. Okay. And it's just going to be that whoever is using the Elmo for whatever purpose, they're gonna have to zoom in and move the information across. If it's something like this, which is cell phone records. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So jury um, in the last couple rows, are any of those numbers, I know you can see there's text, but would you be able to 
say how long the, the third call down lasted for a certain number of seconds. And Ms. Hall, not you, further back, further back. Nope, not visible. All right, you guys need glasses. It's 141. Or what we can do is. Now, can you see it? Is that better? Okay. So we'll need to learn. The problem is the Elmo itself. It's all glory. Yeah. We all really well, let me ask the lawyers while we're working on this technically. One thing we're struggling with with the screens uh, is that if we keep the witness's face on the screen that has the exhibit on it, we are reducing the size of the exhibit necessarily. Or when we just magnified that so you could see the 141, we turned the witness into a munchkin and you couldn't see whether he's sweating or, or what he's doing. We're not required to have a split screen. These two screens could be just the exhibit, but jurors way in the back are gonna have trouble seeing more detail of what's happening with the witness as he or she is reacting to the exhibit or the questions. So we need to strike the right balance. There's not a, a right answer. And I'd like to get thoughts of the practitioners as to what you'd want on the screen. And it may depend on the witness. It may depend on the exhibit. If the number 141 is real important, you're not gonna get a meaningful view of the witness because you're gonna need to really magnify this. And also, I mean, here, here's a thought, Judge, similar to what we were going to do with a book of evidence. If we know that it's something like this and the parties have agreed, then perhaps it should be incumbent upon us to make copies for the jurors and have it there for them to review <clears throat> while they're sitting there. So that's an option. We, we, the judges have discussed, we want to minimize the number of things we hand out to the jurors. That ends up being the bailiff's role. He or she's going to have to hand stuff out. Um, but that may be, especially if the witness is going to be talking about 52 different numbers from an exhibit like this, you can't keep blowing it up. You're going to maybe need to get it in front of the jurors. Um, especially if you have like a CAD report and the 911 call the time, the 911 call is important. You're right. No, no, no. I, I, I get it. This is one number. You could zoom it in and then return it to the witness's face. I mean, there, there are ways to toggle. I just, I don't have a good sense of how important people think it is for the witness's face to be on the big screen. The witness isn't leaving know, the room. I'd like to know which of your face is the person. How, how well can you see the witness's face? Is he small? Like, can you? The, the physical witness, so not on the screen. Can you all see the witness? Yes. Well, from, my bed, from your seat. I can't see him. I'm just short. So perhaps a tall person would have to sit on this row there to see the witness and the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Christina, can you see the witnesses? Okay, so they'll be sitting where the pieces of tape are. Some of you have disregarded. It's on, it's on the back. <laughs> um, we weren't going to call you out, but those those pieces of yellow tape are socially distanced. Um, so. So what if I'm here and I'm working the elbow? Can you still see? Yeah. You got, can you see? But Lauren, you, are you going to question me at the mic because then it may block some of them? No. But the mic will pick Ms. McCauley up from where she's standing. Okay. She doesn't have to can, lean into it. You can stand to the side okay. and still get her. Mm -hmm. So if you're not blocking the the gentleman in the gray suit, then um, then For they sure. can all see the witness. Um, another idea that Mr. Anduran just had is if we do have two screens and we're in a real important exhibit, exhibit witness. So you have one screen with just the witness on it and one screen with the exhibit. Now, you have to look in two different places, but that's true anyway. If we were in a normal day, there's your witness and they're looking up there, they would need to shift between looking at, at the well, two. It's so different if they're looking at the witness's face and then looking at the screen. Right, So it's right. fine. If that's the case, is there a possibility to always have the witness up there and the there? I like that. Yeah. So one, get a TV that works. And then two, if that's always the witness, you can see that. And then you don't need to be toggling. Yeah. 
I like it. When smoke starts coming out his left ear, you've asked a good question. <laughs> but we'll make a note of that. All right. Should we try an audio? We can try audio. File of some sort. Okay. So I have two. I have a 911 call and a video. Which one do you want to start with? Uh, let's do pure audio. Yeah, the 911. I actually think it's just an you know, audio interview. <clears throat> <laughs> what is Brasher doing up there? Following us. Audio only. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Miss Walsh said something in the chat. <laughs> So Ms. Walsh is saying the view on YouTube shows only the document and the view of the podium. It does not show the witness. Oh. Judge, you're the one streaming, right? One more time? Do what? Yeah. Oh, so what do I do to... I need to what? Oh, okay. Hey John. Oh, okay. That yeah, we'll have to work that out. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Walsh. We're gonna work on that. Not gonna happen today. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um great day. I haven't had a had a stuff animal in a while. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, it's really uh, oh, yes. Will the witness take off his mask when he testifies? TBD by attorneys and judge. The default is that masks are on. Um, we may have witnesses who are hard to hear naturally, and the mask makes that such that we have to have the mask off. We may have. So I hadn't finished, and then we hear from Judge Kraut. We may have witnesses where the lawyers say, we don't care, leave the mask on. We may have the reverse where an attorney insists that everyone be able to see um, from below the nose. And I really think it's case by case. The default is gonna be, you've got a mask on because we're in the middle of a pandemic. But I think we have the authority to um, handle that as, as the situation might suggest. Just Kraus? Right, not the face shield, but it's this, <laughs> but, but it's clear. So we're relying on people following Chief Justice Melton's admonition that folks be reasonable and professional if you've got a chain of custody witness, the guy should be able to leave his mask on. That's not what the case is about. But if you've got the eyewitness who has it out for the defendant, it may be that everyone agrees that we either need a clear mask or, or no mask. Um, but in the end, the judge is gonna make that call. And what I'm telling you is our policy is the default is safety first. So there'll need to be a request. And ideally we'd work that out in advance and not in front of the jury where the two sides would say, when we call, so and so, we're 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 going to ask that that person get one of those clear masks or be asked to remove the mask. Will every judge go along with that? I, I don't know. And there's another basis for appeal. Yes, ma'am. Uh, does, does this same policy apply for like post statements as attorneys? You know, sometimes you want jurors to see your face when you're arguing. 
My guess is if we polled the jurors, they would want you wearing your mask as you are gesticulating in their direction. So um, I think that's a harder sell to a judge to say, I really need the jury to see um, something other than, than, than here. I hear you. Um, and again, that's judge by judge. Um, and, and other judges may want to say, I'm fine with you not having your mask on. I, I don't know. But I, I'm thinking not for me. You're not going to be looking at me. You're facing out at the jurors. And I could see jurors in the front row um, not being real excited when you say the word special really loudly. They, they may not like that with no mask. So we need to think about that. Hmm? Yeah. Exhibit over there. Great. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said that the question was why couldn't we just put plexiglass shield in front of the jurors, the jury? And I think the issue is that at the end of the day, what we've learned over these last 10 months is that the shields block the large particles that might happen when she said special with great elocution, but they don't block the small particles that get airborne and go right over that plexiglass screen. My other observation is if the success of your case depends on people seeing your chin, you don't have a great case. So um, I, don't, I don't think that's, that's really what, what we're all here about. Um, all right, we are now have, and thank you for the real time um, parachuting in and doing this. One screen should show our witness. I can't see it, does it have the witness? Living color, big, everyone in the gallery can see the witness. And our video is over there. Can we make the witness disappear from that screen? so that we get all exhibit, please. Great, okay. So actually this is audio. So seeing the audio was less critical, but that now our screens are, are teed up. Before you go any further, is there a sense jurors um, as to which screen you'd want to have the exhibit on? I guess. The great idea was, in theory, someday our witness is there and both these screens are the exhibit. So it's closer to both sides. But for now, does it matter which is which? In case he needs to stand up and point to, okay, got it. Okay. So now we've tendered and admitted an audio exhibit. Let's, let's have our ears open, see what we can hear. Can you pause for a sec? All right, so I have a speaker right here. It's real loud. Back row, how long has she been living at that apartment? It's like a normal jury. Could you hear it? Yeah, exactly. Wait, that was testimony going on? <laughs> Which one's the defendant? <laughs> But okay. even, uh, we couldn't hear her very well. You couldn't, even right there, you couldn't hear her. I could hear the officer, but not the young lady. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's play a little more. Let's play a little more. I just didn't, it's... So could you hear her zip code? Okay, good. So that works. And I, yes, she was harder to hear than the detective. I don't know if he had a body cam, but whatever was recording was close to him and far from her, but um, that projects, that's good. Any thoughts about that, concerns? 
did I understand that you have to do something different for an audio than we were doing with the physical with the other exhibit? So what did she, what did he do different? Well, you have to bring it up to the podium. Oh, okay. Yes. At least right now. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I, I promise as we get a system in place, we'll get something published so that lawyers aren't coming in blind to this. Um, Judge Whitaker asked, hey, when will this courtroom be open for the lawyers to come in and, and try this out? And the answer is starting next week. So you, you don't have a case on the calendar, but that's not the point. Um, folks can start coming in and, and testing this. And if we get it routinized, we will provide some guidance so people know you need to bring a zip drive because if it's an audio exhibit or a video with audio, you're going to need to plug it in somewhere. Um, so we're not trying to surprise anyone. We're, we're, we're learning as we go. Judge, I just want to get clear that if you have evidence, it needs to be on a USB in order to be used. Is that accurate? For the audio. Yeah, so Vanna White is uh, displaying the clear mask. Thank you, Vanna. Thank you, Vanna. Can you all see, see my facial tone? Guilty. <laughs> Liar. Okay. So I'm going to ask you again. If you have evidence, does it need to be on a USB? <laughs> the question is, in what format do you need to bring your evidence? And um, ideally, you would bring your device and everything you've got on it, you could play while sitting at the table. We're not there yet. If some aspect of your evidence has an audio component. The audio stuff has to be plugged in with the fancy machine at the podium. So still photos, anything flat, a video with no audio, you can do from council table. You also can do it from up there. Um, and if that's your thing to be up at the podium, just know that your back is gonna to be to the jury while you do it. With the flash drive, not a CD, not... We can do a CD, but we well, a USB flash drive is preferred. Okay, so the that's rule is USB. Yeah. yeah. That's the rule. That's yeah. USB. Yeah. Just think USB. Yeah. Just use the format is WMA, WMD, something that we just play. If you can take a laptop, then we can play. So not VLC. Or VLC. Yeah. We can do VLC. But there are some formats that give us issues. Another reason to test it out before the trial. Yes, ma'am. Right. So we can work through that, not in this setting, but um, we're, we're, you're already required by some standing orders to get digital versions of all your evidence to the court reporter in some of the courtrooms before trial, but in all of them real soon after trial, because the Court of Appeals wants <laughs> digital stuff as well. Right. Yeah, and I understand from YouTube, they can't hear the audio. That oh, that we just played? They couldn't hear any audio that was playing. Right now? On YouTube. When we played no, the audio. No, when we played the audio, they, they couldn't hear the detective's interview. They couldn't hear it on YouTube. On YouTube? On YouTube. We'll work on that. Don't, we're not going to fix that today. All right. How about the video with audio? On the USB video okay. That's a good name. Mm -hmm. Judge, while she's setting that up, what is our expectation as far as, I mean, if I'm the witness, I guess I'm expected the to look at the screen the audio. whole time. But I think for whoever's sitting there, it's going to be really awkward that I'm talking to these people by facing in this direction, if that makes sense. I mean, I guess if we want my face on the screen. So I should be facing the screen. This is just a normal police interview from APD. Um, okay. You're not tied to the camera. Okay. So it may be that on the screen, some is, is your profile. Well, we I'm thinking. Dilemma of, 
you can't have a camera right in front of you if okay. you're looking at the jury because then the actual jury can't see you. right they're blocked by a I'm guessing well, natural. Like the GoPro. <laughs> like, so well, I'm just thinking somebody's natural inclination, if they're being asked a question at a table, is to face this direction. Right. And then the jurors uh, can still see. You. Right. I mean, in a normal trial, right. Most witnesses, unless they are actual witnesses, don't turn and look. Do you want to try gum? Do you have gum? Right. Like fact, the attorney gets Do you have the GOM player? Jury, if you're Do you want to try player? Do you want to try different player? We only have VLC. Okay. This is dynamic. There's no other players that's, installed that's on here. No, but again, worry less about YouTube and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's about people people sitting out here. That's yeah, fair. I, I want to reiterate that. I was talking with some of the defense attorneys over here. Yeah. Don't let the tail wag the dog here, y'all. I mean, if, if we decide that it's overly complicated, we can still have a publicly open trial without broadcasting it to YouTube. We're not right. obligated. Uh, We're trying to accommodate that. But in a courtroom this big, we could still have members of the media, members of the public, et cetera, in here. Right. And so we want to focus on the use of the evidence and the ability of the actual jury to see the witness. And we're hoping that I think we'll that's what I used on my computer. Issues associated with YouTube oh, secondarily. I think so. The yeah. issue, remember, is we will all physically be present together in this courtroom conducting a trial in person. And, and we have intentionally asked judges not to submit cases to these early calendars that they believe would be high profile for that reason. So mother of victim can easily fit in the courtroom, mother of defendant can easily fit in the courtroom and we're not denying anyone access. But I, I think that's a, a healthy focus. All right, we have video with audio. Yes. We're working on it. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so you have the GOM player. Mm -hmm. I think I use it on my desktop, the GOM player. That's what I use on my desktop. MMM4. I've never seen that. Yeah. Well, this is just standard um, APD format. So that's MMM4 is a standard APD format? APD videos prior to 2020 came in this format. Okay. That's good to know. Yep. So while they're working on that, I just want to once more confirm line of sight. So, um, Mr. Griggs, you have no trouble seeing the witness. I think you can open that. Okay. And counsel, you can see him too. No problem at all. Yeah. Great. Okay. And then go to my flash drive. Yeah, see, there it looks Well, for those of you connecting remotely, we're going to try one one last exhibit, which is video with audio, and uh, and I think we'll we'll be able to wrap things up. You can fast forward a little bit. <laughs> it's still happening. <laughs> All right. Don't worry about what's happening with the video. Let's like, can people hear it? Jurors, can you hear this video? Okay. And is your screen on? Is whatever is it playing? You can see what's playing? Yes. Okay, Sean. great. Yep. Okay. Any idea why she was um, teleporting other than whatever drugs she had been using? <laughs> Thanks. She actually wasn't. So she actually wasn't using drugs. And that, yeah. But then she would see lots of the detectives, not the other way around. It's reversed. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. All right. So that it's not a Zoom rooms thing. Okay. It's what you weren't warned that if it's a funky piece of software that created the recording, we need to make sure the codex is important. Okay. Hold on. Yep. Okay. Make sure that the video of the codec is correct because every single agency has a different codec if they're using that video up there. So we need to make sure you bring it down and make the codec as soon as it's here. All right. Well, also, Your Honor, there's something extreme. I don't know, but there is certainly reverb or echo coming in the video. That's because there were two videos to play. Oh, okay. Okay. Here but yeah, I'm, I'm hearing sort of the echo. We have microphones set up now. Was that because you thought we were doing voir dire or? Okay, that's all right. I just wanted, those, those aren't picking up audio to help us hear things. That, that was just thinking, oh, if we had jurors who were answering questions, that's why that was set up. Okay, so actually when this is set up for trial, those will be gone. Great. It's, it's, it's stopped. Yeah. The voice is stopped. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> for now. You gotta turn it on. Okay, but a little little echo, as long as it doesn't kill the court reporter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Judge Kraus, you have uh, anything else you want to um, have us experiment with while well, we've we've got a, a mock jury and uh, litigators and a defendant? I don't think so. We've touched on all the concerns that Emily and Tibbers and I were trying to work out. So mm -hmm. I don't think I'm supposed to check this for a Okay. While you're going through that, um, uh, Sheriff's team, anything you want to share? We have in the room folks who will be involved with these trials going forward. Any concerns or things we need to be thinking about? There'll be only one defendant for these trials, um, and it's a he. He will be seated right by the door for lockup, and we have sorted out. The thing we struggled with in the past was, well, how do we get a minute out of the courtroom if this is also going to be the jury room? And we decided we'll just grab one seat, and so the jury room is one seat. So. Sheriff's office will be responsible for moving the jury back and forth when we take breaks. But that way, we don't have to do anything funny. We just wait till the jurors are gone. Then a defendant can leave the courtroom through his special door. I think if we do it that way, that addresses some of the concerns you had flagged. Um, the one thing that um, was a slightly different era, um, it was a different lieutenant, but he had flagged, you might need two bailiffs during the trial because... You're going to have a jury in the middle, and you could have on either side of the jury folks who are feeling pretty passionate about the case. Um, so it's a little more resource intensive. Um, uh, so it, it might be a total of three in the courtroom rather than two that you'd have in a, in a jury. But it's only one trial in the whole courthouse. So hopefully that, that is staffable. Um, I think that's it. Um, Judge Newkirk, any questions? Not right now. Uh, I'm just wondering how much the defendant's going to play on home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can have one more question from the defense in regards to um, hit. I'm going to get to you because that's what Mr. Andrew just flagged. Let me just check with the other judges and then we're going to try out the headsets because that's a key piece of technology. Judge Whitaker, did you have anything else? Okay. Judge Barwick? Yes. We're glad you're here. <laughs> yeah. Go dogs. Did you have any questions? All right. <laughs> you and I will catch up later then. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Judge, how, how are we going to do physical evidence? Oh, right. The physical evidence. So, and this, this involves the, the deputies who will be in the courtroom. Um, so physical evidence, um, sometimes people use the Elmo. Like I know when it's the bullet fragment, they'll put it on the Elmo. So one, they can see that it's exhibit seven and it has the coroner's initials on it. And you can zoom in on it, and then you see it's a, it, it looks big. But if it's the murder weapon or it's the pink thing, um, we, we need to, to just think about how that gets shared with, with the jury. Um, it is not a good plan um, to pass things amongst the jurors, having each juror touch it. 
um, they're going to develop their own technique of examining the evidence when it's time to deliberate. We won't have 13 copies of the gun. There'll be one gun for them to look at and do whatever they're going to do with. We have talked about requiring the parties to provide maybe not 12 sets of every exhibit, but we might end up saying you should have four sets of the photos so that we're not having to have every photo be touched by all the jurors. Um, but during the trial itself, I don't know that it would be all that different other than we don't want folks moving too much around the courtroom. Right. If you're displaying the pink thing, um, if, if you're the lawyer doing it, you could hold it up and the jurors can see it. Not all your exhibits will be as big and cuddly as that, but I, I don't, did you have other thoughts or questions about what you do with the, the physical item? It's just, I guess, like, are we going to be, I guess we're going to follow the normal procedure of giving it to the witness and then the witness will have it. And if they need to demonstrate something that there will be a camera on them. Um, right. And then if, I guess if there's something more significant about the exhibit, <clears throat> then we can put it under the Elmo. Yeah. Or to judge Krause's point, we forget about the camera. If what the witness oh. is demonstrating is the hole in the shirt, because it shows where the bullet went in, the witness stands up and the witness may not be on the camera, but if these 14 people can see this is the shirt and points where the hole is, there's nothing wrong with saying, can all the jurors see that? And they nod their head. And if they can't, we hold it somewhere else. I think that's going to be more akin to the good old days than any of this other stuff. Again, with the, the request that if they're going to be 18 physical items, if you could just have them all up by the witness stand before the witness takes the stand, so you're not going up there with each one. Well, is it too much for latex gloves? I mean, that they have in a trash can at the end of the jury box so that they can only use the latex gloves one time. And then there's another piece of evidence, they get a new pair of gloves. They you know, you throw it away. Another piece of evidence that comes up, you, you require to wear another set of latex gloves, throw it away. You're talking about for the jurors for or the for the jurors, witness? They have to touch it. We talked about passing it along. And so they have on gloves that can only be used once, not once a day, but as yeah. soon as that pink thing is done. So we, we've talked away. about that. We do have PPE supply. We have gloves available for jurors if something like that comes up. But again, hopefully the lawyers would flag that in advance and say, judge, we think there are three exhibits that merit sharing with the jury. I got you. And then we'll know the plan for it. We'll, what witness? It's just one witness, all three with one witness. Great. When this witness is coming, we'll let the jurors know. They're gonna, there may be some exhibits that we're going to let you hand to each other. And then we make sure everyone has gloves. Because again, we just want to limit it. You're not saying we can't do it. We just want to try to limit it as much Correct. as possible. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And so if a judge concludes, you know what, it might be neat if the jurors held it, but it's not necessary. You may have a judge saying, we're not, we're not doing that this time. Um, but again, the more you push into that pretrial conference to say, here's what it's going to be and here's why I think the jury ought to, then there's no surprise and the judge knows it's coming. Oh, well, it was right here. Mm -hmm. He's doing it on All right. Um, so the headsets, I think the last piece of technology we wanted to try, um, can we get um, the headsets out? I don't know how these work, so we'll follow directions from Mr. Andrew. I mean, we're saying at least so we can see if you stay here. How many can we use? We have four. Um, why don't we just do three? So we'll use two defense attorneys and their client. Because I assume if it works well, we just get more. Pardon me? Two defense attorneys? and the defendant. So Mr. Griggs gets one and then will you serve as co-counsel so we can have all great, thank you. I knew you wanted to get back up there. <laughs> oh, I guess I do need, okay. I guess I don't really want to. Just me. My kids love these marky tonky things. We'll take them home and report. You want to hold your, you want to hold your pink thing, Jeremy? So you've ended up being more of a mannequin. You've done no, a I didn't even job. get to do anything. Um, Armstrong like actually had to say some things. Um, you didn't really have to, but you, you good job. I appreciate yeah. it. I worked hard at this. 
Don't turn it on. <laughs> This is probably doing the most, but are these things wireless? Like, can you bring in your own earbuds? Like, I mean, Okay. Yeah, I, they're expensive, and I don't know that a juror would want to wear the same one again and again. Um, when we've been talking with practitioners, more on the civil side than the criminal side, they've asked that question. Well, why, why can't you just give all the potential jurors clear masks? And, well, they probably would like to have more than $25 a day per diem as well. So... Um, I, I don't think that's how it's going to play out. Um, in talking with other jurisdictions that have done jury trials, um, everyone survived with the jurors wearing the mask. It's a, it's a fair question, but it, it, where I see it coming is maybe the lawyers would say, you know what, this one juror, it's real complicated. And maybe that you, you go into another room and, and you clear mask that one juror, but I don't think it would be standard issue. Yeah, if I were the juror, I'd be, I'd be sad because it doesn't really fit around you. Is there the possibility of doing it just for here? Well, then, then you're talking about getting 80 of them. And with voir dire in the assembly hall, um, you could have jurors with no masks and you're gonna have trouble seeing their facial reactions when they're up in row 52. I can hear you. So the thinking is, um, other lawyers in the courtroom, that these devices, I'm not trying because they need to be able to hear over other noises anyway, that these walkie-talkie headsets, they have multiple channels. And so the prosecution would have a channel so that they could talk amongst themselves if they want to. The defense would have a channel, and then there'd be a shared channel if we're doing something like a bench conference without having to have everyone convene up here. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I don't hear anything. No. All right. So, what about the under the window? Yep. So, let's try something. Um, uh, witness, you're on. Ms. McCauley, would you please ask your witness questions about that strange pink thing? Yes. While that's happening, you guys try to confer um, right. and see if you can hear each other and we'll see if we can hear you because we don't, we shouldn't be hearing you. Um, and you need to be able to hear each other with the masks. You have to speak probably a little louder to allow your lawyer or your client to hear you, but we're going to have what would really be going on in court, other noise and see if you all are able to confer. All right. Um, Mr. Daly, um, the exhibit that I've handed you, could you please identify that exhibit? That is a creepy pink narwhal. <laughs> Thank you. Um, did you see that creepy pink narwhal um, near the crime scene? Definitely. Where at the crime scene was it located? It was right next to the dead body. And does it appear to be in the same condition as when you last saw it? Yes, it is. Right. Great. Did that work? Were you guys able to hear each other? Could you hear each other? Yes, I can certainly hear him. Could you hear her? Okay, because you were just 
you were, <laughs> you were being a good client. And you were I'm talking, talking, talking. talking. Huh. Okay. Same. I was like, there goes Griggs. Griggs is not shutting up, but um, I couldn't hear what he was saying. So the most important person, the closest juror, Cindy so Rose Palmer, said. Yeah. yeah. I didn't hear that either. I was focused on the, the normal was pretty oh. like intense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So that has promise. Um, I, we'll, we'll need to work on it, but that has promise um, as a way to address I mean, one of the, again, one of the big concerns the defense shared with us from the last one is how could we ever communicate in the middle of trial without calling a complete timeout? Um, Cause you've got clients who aren't going to be able to write notes or it's not legible or whatnot. So here you could have a back and forth. Did you have your co-counsel on or? We... Yes, yeah, she could hear. Okay. Um, Great. And All so right. the only thing I would ask is that we would have a second to explain how this works with our client. Because like you walked over here because Mr. Griggs kept holding the button when he got done talking. <laughs> so it was still that back and forth. And if he's holding that, Ms. Lebensi can't speak with him unless he releases his. So we would just need 10 minutes before. Sure. Part of the operating procedures that we'll be working through and, sure. and um uh, the good news is the judges who are apt to have trials early on are all going to be real flexible with, hey, we're working through some new things. So, okay. And um, the last thing I told him in terms of sanitation, you know, like the little covers that you get at the doctor's office, if we're going to use these for multiple defense attorneys, now obviously we might need some plastic. Something. Yeah, so we may need disposable covers. Also, for one trial, we just need to make sure each person knows which is hers or his. And if the next trial is not for a week, we wipe it down, and and there you go. And so for that, you could probably just put a red a red dot or yep. a blue dot. And yep, no, I had the same thought, and that that's how we'd handle it. Okay, fantastic. Thoughts, concerns, um, stage left, right, whatever stage that would be. Anything. You guys enjoyed it? Appreciate everyone being here. Who's keeping the building safe? You got like half the sheriff's office in here. <laughs> Now's the time to get past the metal detector. Our jury, everything worked well enough. We've got some key learnings. We need to figure out how to empower the witness to annotate. Um, I love the idea of having the witness up here all the time. So these screens are for the exhibits. We'll see if we can do that. We have some work to do with YouTube, but to Judge Krause's point, We'll make it work as best as possible, but this is open to the public and, and that's not gonna be, I think, a debilitator for us. Stage, other stage side, all good. Appreciate everyone being here. Ms. McCauley, you and your team, anything else? Anything else? No? Okay, cool. Mr. Forte, do you have any concerns if you're taking all this down? Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. I figured out the annotate thing. Hold on one sec. Yeah, someone sent something about that. Like, hey, ooh, you just drew on the dog. Yeah, so we just dropped down many from the top. To try it on your screen. It's like try to annotate on your screen. Um, and when I do it, it, it only is on my screen. So you can't link it. Um, oh, we're not. Okay, last time it didn't. I don't know why. Yes. Yes, No, no, I I